between his creations. If you are a return viewer, thank you so much for coming by each week. And if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for checking it out. And if you like what you see, please click that little red subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell-shaped icon next to it, that will let you know anytime I post a video, which is always on Saturdays and usually on Wednesdays, but things might be a little different this week. I'll explain later. Let's get started. I have several finished objects this week. So first off, I have finished the Christmas hats for the boys. That means I've got nine knitted hats done. Now I'm into the crochet. But anyway, these are the last three. This is a pattern by Barbara Benson called the Mock Cable. So I have this one done, this one done, and this one done. And this one is a little smaller than the rest because the smallest of the grands is just going to just shy of, he'll be like a week shy of four years old on Christmas. So this should fit him fine. So, um, yeah, so that's three of each pattern. I have, I have three of this pattern. I have three of the, um, pinwheel beanie, which is the pattern I designed. And then I have three of the globular hats. So all together, I have nine boys hats and they're all done in the shades of blue and the gray and white. So that's my three finished objects. Now I have two granddaughters and for them, I am doing um, crocheted hats. I figure I can get away with lacier things with the girls than I could with the boys. Now here's the interesting thing. Let me show you first the girl's hat. This is the youngest of the two girls. She is going to be nine in September. So let me take the hook out so I don't skewer myself. So this is the divine hat. And the color, this is just my stripe and it's plum, plum, some plum prune, I think it is, but there it is. I have, as you can see right here, I am starting the brim. So I'm almost done. I almost decided to finish this and then film the video, but it was, it was getting later. So I was like, no, we go ahead and film it and I'll show you the finished one next week. Now, I actually made two of these. This is my second time making. I had, I had another one done of this same yarn. In fact, it was this same yarn and I did it two the exact instructions of the pattern. It was huge. I don't think, I mean, look at this. I don't think I'm a loose crocheter. I'm not a tight crocheter, but the first hat was, it used up all of the yarn and it, it fit me and it was a little loose on me. So there was no way it was going to fit a nine-year-old. It would have looked like she was wearing a lampshade on her head. So I decided to rip the whole thing out. So technically this, this was done and now undone. I frogged the whole thing. And instead of doing the 15 like repeats or 15 spokes that go around here, I did um, 12. I cut it down. So I am using the crochet hook that it calls for, but I'm almost wondering if the yarn itself is thicker, if that's what the difference is. This is considered a worsted weight, but when I look at it compared to some of my other worsted weights, this to me seems a little bit thicker. Um, almost like between a worsted and an Aran weight. So I don't know if that's made the difference or what. I'm using the right sized hook for the pattern and everything. So I don't know if you guys have any clues what happened please let me know. But this one seems to be working. I just cut, I cut it down in size and no, I didn't check gauge ahead of time. That would have been a, a smart move, but yeah, Katrina doesn't always do smart moves. So uh, yeah. So anyway, that is almost done. It'll probably be done by the time you're watching this video, this will be done because I have like three, three rows or four rows to go and it'll be finished. So you'll see it in its completed form next week, but by the time you're watching it, it's done. So I did learn something interesting with this. Well, actually a couple interesting things. Last fall, I made a bunch of pot holders and 
trivets and th like hot pads and dishcloths, things like that for my daughter and my daughter-in-law. The pattern is so simpler, similar. When I started doing the divine hat, and that's what this pattern is, and it is a free pattern. And thank you to all of you who either sent me the PDF or let me know what tutorials to watch. I really appreciate that. So, do you remember this pot holder? Look how similar it is. It's like exact. You know, it's not showing up real well because this is navy blue, but it's the same exact pattern as the divine hat, except it has more increases so it lays flat. Because it just, each row continually gets um, bigger, whereas the divine hat, the last rows, it's like seven rows of four clusters. Um, so, yeah, I started, like I said, I started doing this pattern thinking, where have I done this before? That would be it, the pot holder. So that was interesting fact number one. Interesting fact number two, I can make two adult-sized hats out of one skein of yarn and have extra. And, you know, I was saying that I thought the yarn seemed like it was thicker. This is the same yarn. But look at the difference when you look at the actual, when you look at the actual yarn in this, even. It looks thicker. This is also just my stripe, but can you see the comparison? I'm looking at my monitor to make sure I'm getting this right, but look at the comparison in yarn. This looks thicker for some reason. Like I said, it's not supposed to be, but it certainly looks thicker. And this is also just my stripe. It's the same, it's the same yarn, just a different color. And this knit knitted up right to gauge and was perfect. So I don't know if it's just the yarn or what. I really don't know. Or if it's my crochet skills. I'm not sure which. But I mean, on this, the worst, it looks perfectly fine. Anyway, I'm getting, I can make two hats that are knitted and use one skein of yarn and have a little bit left over. This is taking it, by the time I finish with this and do the brim, this is going to use the entire skein of yarn for one small sized hat. So just interesting to see how, how it works together that way. So I have one more hat to make after this one. And that is for my oldest grandchild, which is also the oldest granddaughter, and she's 17. And thank you to those of you who suggested some patterns to me. Uh, one that kept coming up, it came up a couple of different times, was the Stormy Waters hat. So thank you to those of you who suggested that one. That is the one I'm going to try to make. Uh, we'll see how that works out. Uh, I do have, thankfully, it's done in teal and gray and white. And I do have extra gray from these hats that I can kind of grab from if I'm if I run out. So I think I'll be okay as far as if it if it uses extra yarn because it will be probably a little bit bigger than this because like I said, this hat's for a nine year old and my oldest granddaughter is seventeen, so she's gonna be getting an adult sized hat. So my other work in progress is my knitting and I am making a cotton linen blend sweater. And this is how far I have gotten this week. You can see my stitch marker. So all together, here's what it looks like. I'm not too far from separating for the sleeves. Um, I need to measure this again. I think I am a, at about 14 inches. I have to have, I think it's 16 or 17. So it, it's going quickly. And I'm on my second skein of this yarn, so I hope I have enough. And, um, yeah, so there is my, it's a short-sleeved sweater. Um, it's called, I didn't, did I bring the, I brought the pattern up. And here is the pattern. And can we all say the designer's name together? Because... Yeah, I've been, this is the second sweater I've knitted out of this. Uh, it is Lena Fagerson. Aren't you proud of me? I said it on the first try this time. Um, yes, and she is a crochet and knitwear designer for Annie's. She does uh, the majority, if not all, of their signature designs 
uh, for Annie's craft store. So if you look over in their pattern department in their signature collection, she is the main designer. So, and I liked this sweater so well the first time I made it that I'm making it a second time. Now I didn't say, I, I mentioned I was making the Stormy Waters hat. I didn't tell you who it's by. Uh, that is by Colleen Hayes. She is also known as Yarn Wars. So um, that's where the pattern is coming from if you want to go over and check it out. And it is also a free pattern. So now it's time to see what you guys have been making this week. Now an update on our Christmas in July fair. Now the winner was chosen by Dana's Wonderlust Crochet and the winner was Trisha Swift. And I was really happy to see that she won because sometimes you'll see her post in the show and tell and she makes everything for charity. And she reached her goal a few weeks ago of 50 Afghans in a one year period. That is almost one Afghan per week with only taking two weeks off. That's an Afghan a week. That's amazing. So um, she does crochet work and they aren't just like your plain, just granny stripe or anything. They're fancier looking Afghans. Uh, so you do see the, her post every so often on our show and tell. So I was glad to see somebody who is a giver receive for a change. And so she is going to be getting the prizes from all of the fairies. And the prize I sent her 
I told you I would post a picture and I forgot to take a picture before I sealed the envelope that it mailed it in. So we'll show you a simulation of what I gave her. I sent her one of my drawstring project bags that's reversible. Uh, these are for sale over in my Etsy shop. Um, Dana had had sent me a message and told me what her favorites were, uh, that she liked earth tones and reds. So I made one especially up for her that had earth tones in it and red in it. And so that's the one that she got, but there's every single one of them is different. So I couldn't show you the exact one, but yeah, they're drawstring, they're reversible. And if you're interested, they are for sale over my Etsy shop and the link is down below. So that's what she got. And Leanne Stearns also replied and gave me her address. So her prize has been sent out as well. And she received a skein of my hand dyed yarn. So the, the remainder of that is also for sale over my Etsy shop. No intentional plug there for my sales, but anyway, yeah, there, there it is. So, well, maybe it is an intentional plug for my sales. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I've got stuff in my Etsy shop if you want to check it out. Now, this is episode 195. I am approaching episode 200 in five weeks. So get ready for a giveaway. Yes, I will be announcing it in, in the upcoming weeks. I'm not going to announce it this far out. Uh, but as we get a little bit closer, I will be setting up a giveaway uh, to celebrate 200 episodes. I actually have more than that already because of the that's not including my Wednesday episodes. This is just 200 Saturday episodes. Um, I think altogether I have over 400 or 500 videos, but we're just counting the ones that are like the regular Saturday videos. So there will be a giveaway coming up for that. Now, last week I told you in my acquisitions, I got a, a set of wooden or bamboo crochet hooks and that I would use them and give you my review this week. Okay, here's the one I am using. This is a five millimeter. Um, I have been using a metal one, one of my metal like rubber handled ones that I really like for the body of this. And then I switched to a five millimeter in the bamboo to do the brim. Not a fan. Um, I did, I, I had a tiny bit of problems with it being a little snaggy, you know, cause it is wood. It's going to have a little splinters and a little tip. For knitting needles and crochet hooks that are bamboo, I just use a little emery board, you know, like a fingernail file. And when I run across an, a little rough edge, I just use a little emery board on it and smooth it out and it works fine. So once I, I you know, it had a little rough spot under the hook and I fixed that like in about two minutes and it was no big deal. Um, I think because I have tendonitis in this thumb right here and that tendonitis is from learning how to use a Tunisian crochet hook a few years ago that was also wood. And that's what triggered my um, tendonitis to begin with. I think with wooden crochet hooks, just like with wooden knitting needles, they tend to create more drag. Um, in other words, a metal knitting needles or a metal crochet hook, the yarn slides on it very easily. You can see it. But if you try to slide it on a wooden hook or wooden needles, it creates drag. There's a, it can actually affect your tension, but um, the stitches don't slide on it as well. And I think that plays a part in it. And I don't know that the necessarily the narrowness, it does affect to a point because anytime I have to keep my hands together like this, that's when it kind of triggers the uh, tendonitis down in here. Uh, so I find myself switching. I normally hold my crochet hook like a pencil, but I find myself switching to hold my crochet hook. I feel like I'm grabbing it like a, a turkey leg. I tend to hold it like this occasionally just to kind of ease up the pain that I'm getting right in here. Um, I don't notice it doing it that much with the ergonomic, the rubber handled ones, because they're a little bit softer and because they're a little bit thicker. So I think that makes a difference. So. Um, I think the wooden ones that I have that are thicker, like nine millimeter or higher, I think I'm going to do better with them than I am with this one. I mean, this I can use for a little bit and then I have to put it down. 
Um, now the metal ones I can use and it doesn't seem to bother me at all because again it's got that soft spot. So I guess I could take one of those like pen cushions that you know you slide over a ballpoint pen and put on here if it would stay. It's maybe too thin to get it to, to work but um, it's a thought. So um, yeah that's my review. It's okay but just like knitting needles my preference is metal out of the two. So um, yeah, that's my that's my personal opinion of bamboo. Just as far as for me, I I think I like the metal better. So now it's time for now in our come and get it section, we have the Dollar Tree has some new premier yarn that's um, the color new colors that have come out. They are carrying Premier Just Yarn in acrylic worsted. You do have to buy six, um, but that's only six dollars and you get six skeins of yarn. So you can't go too far bad or too far wrong. Yeah, um, but they have some new colors that they have come out with. They also are carrying Premier Just Cotton. You do have to buy again six of those. And they still have some closeout um, of the Premier Home, which is also a cotton yarn, but it's a, I think it's maybe a smaller skein. And so that one you only have to buy three. So uh, that is the Dollar Tree. Now Leisure Arts, in their knitted section, I went with, I thought it would be interesting to go with beginner books for knitting and for crochet this week. Um, just simply because some of you have said you're trying to learn to knit and I've heard some of you say you're trying to learn to crochet. Me too. Um, yeah, I've, I've been crocheting for two years, but I've got so much more to learn. So uh, thank you to you guys that like help me along. You're, you're, you're on my speed dial on my phone. I jokingly say, not so jokingly say, some of you I have talked to before and said, what do I do? Anyway, thank you guys. So um, you know who you are. In the knitted section, we have the complete book, a uh, complete knit collection for beginners. And so it's several knitted projects that are beginner level projects. It's $9.99. And then likewise, in the crochet section, we have ultimate crochet collection for beginners. And it's $12.99. Now over in Create for Less, they do sell yarn. Sometimes it's a bargain, sometimes it's about the same price as any place else. Uh, but they do have the Sugar and Cream Scrubs Off, which is like the scrubby yarn that you use when you make, you blend it with the other cotton when you make dishcloths. Okay, they have it for $2.59. They also have um, just the regular Lily Sugar and Cream for $2.59. Uh, the best deal on that used to be over at Consumer Crafts, but Consumer Crafts went out of business. They actually sold into uh, Michael's. I discovered that today. I knew they had gone out of business, but they actually merged with Michael's uh, is what they ended up doing. But they had the best prices on Lily Sugar and Cream. So sadly, they're not around. But you can get Dollar, uh, Dollar Tree. You can get the yarn there for a buck. So why wouldn't you? Um, that I would buy there before I would spend other places for more money for something that's just a dishcloth. But anyway, they do have the scrub off type of yarn for $2.59. They also have Red Heart Croquet Gradient Cakes for $4.49. Um, I don't know if that's a good price or not, but gradient yarns tend to be a little bit more pricey sometimes. Um, and these are like the cakes. So I'll insert a picture so you know what I'm talking about. So over in Annie's, they have, they also have yarn, and I checked their clearance section, and they sell, now, I will try to pronounce this one right, because I called it Sheepies last week. It is Shapeyas, Shapeyas, Shapeyas. It's a, I believe it's Norwegian or Dutch um, yarn company. And thankfully, several of you corrected me, and Yoka confirmed how it was supposed to be pronounced. 
So it is an alpaca. There is a shape, yes, alpaca for $4.99. Now they do only have two colors available. One is white and one is kind of a light, kind of a celery green kind of color. So if you're shopping around for alpaca in those two colors, you're in luck. Um, but they do have some other things over in their clearance section as well. Lion Brand, a lot of you took advantage of those sales. They had like two or three big sales this week. Um, yeah, who doesn't love a sale? And a little tip for you guys, because I normally, when I run across a sale, I pass it on to you all. I always post the sales in yellow. So if you see one of my videos pop up and there's like yellow background, you know it's it's a sale is what I'm posting. And I usually put it on the YouTube channel and I also will put it over on Facebook as well. So that way you can see it either place. But if you see yellow, you know it's it's like, wah, 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 wah. So, you know, like a warning sign, sale, sale, sale. Yeah. Okay, totally derailed. But anyway, that's, that is, uh, that's Annie. No, I'm on to... I'm on the Lion brand. I got sidetracked. On, I got excited by sales. Can you tell? Uh, yeah. Anyway, Lion brand. At this point, I don't know of any sales because they tend to do like flash sales. So I let you know as I find them out. However, they do have, um, I've got yarn fluff around my eye. Um, they do have several yarns, like summer yarns, on sale right now for $5.99. One of them is Kobu, which is a cotton bamboo blend, which is extremely soft. If you saw the orange sweater I was wearing, a lot of you called it yellow um, in the video. Um, because the lighting, I guess it looks yellow, but it actually is orange. Um, the sweater I was wearing last week is a cotton bamboo blend. It's not Kobu, but it is a cotton bamboo blend, and I love it. It washes wonderfully. And it's just very, very soft and comfortable. So Lion Brand has one called Kobu for $5.99. They also have Pima Cotton. Can you hear my neighbor's dog barking? My neighbor's dog, dog barks every time he goes outside. Uh, Pima Cotton for $5.99. And they have Trubo, or yeah, Trubo, which is just plain bamboo. And it is also $5.99. So those are kind of like summer summer weight cottons that are uh, cottons bamboos that are out there that Lion Brand has all for five ninety nine each. Knit Picks is also running a sale. Um, it is thirteen ninety nine. This is in their clearance. It's thirteen ninety nine for two cakes of Stroll Gradient. They're fifty gram skeins, and there's you get two of them for thirteen ninety nine. So roughly $7 a piece, which is not bad at all. And to me, I'll show you the picture. It looks like two little eyeballs looking at you. Uh, but you get two cakes. So um, anyway, I will show you a picture of that. And then Knit Crate is no longer running their $5 box. Um, for your first subscription box, but they are running it at 50% off. If you want to give them a try, you can try your first box for $12.50. They're normally $24.99. So uh, the link to that is down below. And, oh, a little note about Knit Crate, because I'm filming this on the 30th of July, Thursday. I have still not received my July Knit Crate yarn. I did contact them. So in case you are looking for it and wondering, where is my yarn? Um, it is coming. They are once again having problems getting the yarn out of the country they bought it for. They bought the yarn, they said, months ago. And it's sitting at the runway. They were trying, to, every time they try to get it onto a plane, it either gets canceled because of the virus issues um, or they don't have enough space on the plane because people are flying out and they don't have enough places to put the, enough storage to put the yarn on board. So um, they said it is coming. They are trying. They have been back and forth in contact. Um, so just in case you were wondering where your yarn is, it's not the fault of Knit Crate. They are kind of, they've got their hands tied. They're like, we bought it. We're waiting for it to come in. We've got people on staff ready to package it once it gets into the country. They're just having problems getting getting it here at this point. So, um, yeah, so I'm excited 
to see what it is. So if it comes in anytime soon, you'll see a Knit Crate unboxing whenever it does. Um, now we'll get to what's going to be going on this week. Okay, I had somebody contact me and ask if I was interested, would I ever consider doing a Zoom knit bunch with everybody new Zooming? Um, I looked into it, but I can only Zoom 10 people at a time. And my... I, I do Zoom here at home with another uh, Bible study group, and sometimes my connection with Zoom is not the greatest. I just have some issues with it for some reason. Um, I, I'm afraid of scheduling it, and then everybody would be there but me because my connection's not working right or something. So, um, yeah, I'm just a little leery of trying that. But I am willing to try and I've never done it before, I'm willing to try a live stream, which means just like if you watch The Secret Yarnery, uh, she does the chats where you guys can chat and put questions in the on the sidebar, and she chats back and forth. That's what I'll try, and that way everybody that wants to can participate, and everybody can watch it back afterwards. So I think that's the way I'm going to go. I've really been bouncing around the Zoom because i I thought it was an interesting concept and it would be kind of fun because I could chat back and forth with just a, a couple of you at the time. But I can only do 10 people without having a paid prescri or prescription. Without having a paid subscription to Zoom, I can only do 10 people at a time. And if I'm one of them, that means only nine people can participate at a time. And like I said, the more people that get on, the worse my connection gets. Um, so... Yeah, I I don't know that it would work with where I live. We also have no TV reception too. Yeah, I live I live in a, like a plateau area. There's mountains all the way around me. I live just outside of Gettysburg, and it's so it's flat, and then there's mountains, and for some reason it affects our reception. So my internet is not as fast as it should be, which makes it really interesting with me having work meetings at times. People will start talking, and all of a sudden they sound like robots. It's really interesting. Um, we also don't get much rain here for some reason. The, the mountains affect. It's amazing how much the mountains, and they're not big mountains. We're talking foothills. But um, it does affect things. That storms go around us. My, my grass is brown and crunchy right now. Um, I need to go out and do a rain dance or something in the yard. I don't know. It's, it's really looking, it's looking so bad. Um, so anyway, that is my plan is to do a live stream and it will be on Tuesday because that's the day I don't have to work. So I am hoping to set it up for Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, Eastern Standard, yeah, I live in Eastern Standard Time. So um, yeah, more details. I will try to send out a reminder on Facebook like the day before so you guys know to, to tune in because I feel really stupid talking to myself. So I have really rambled on here. So anyway, that will be it for this week. Like I said, no Wednesday video. Instead, we're going to tune in Tuesday at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I'm going to try to muddle through my first live stream. We'll see how that goes. So um, yeah, I've never done it before. I've been watching some tutorials. So we'll, we'll see how that works out. So that's it for this week. Thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. And again, if you have not already subscribed, please click that little red button. And I will see you all later. Bye, everybody.